What's going on everyone and welcome to a new video with me Adam from Green Auto Services. Um, today we have a 2010 VW Golf 2 litre TDI with an electronic handbrake. Now I say specifically an electronic handbrake because we have an issue uh, with the rear brakes. The actual um, electronic handbrake works but the actual caliper uh, itself, the actual piston um, we suspect is seizing. Very quick backstory, the customer was away, heard some grinding noise from the rear, um, it took it into a garage that they were local to at the time and um, they found that the near side rear caliper has actually seized or is extremely tight. Um, so they actually managed to push the piston back um, with a bit of uh, force and oil, um, replaced the pads and the discs but didn't replace the caliper. So it's with me today to have a little look, diagnose and replace accordingly. So on that note, we will get the vehicle up in the air and uh, get straight into it. Whilst you are here, if you are enjoying the video or perhaps learn a little something, please don't hesitate to drop us a like and more importantly, hit that subscribe button. For so on that note, let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are at the, uh, the offside rear. Now, um, to cut a long story short, this is the side that is not causing um, any potential problem. Um, but the reason why I'm starting on this side is to also show you guys a good comparable to effectively what's called as a known good or brakes that are working absolutely fine. Um, so all I've done is got the car up in the air so the wheels are off the floor. Um, I've gone inside the car, I've turned the ignition on, engine off, foot on the brake pedal and released the electronic handbrake. So um, because this uh, vehicle is just a front wheel drive, there is no drive shaft to the rear at all. So with the brakes off and the handbrake off, this wheel should spin really freely with almost no input whatsoever. So if I literally just grab the wheel, and that is absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That is exactly what I expect. So now we're gonna go over to the other side, the near side rear, and have a look and see what that wheel is doing. Okay, so here we are at the near side rear. So this is the passenger rear. So this is the side that I suspect, or I've been told, um, has a seized or a seizing caliper. Um, so just like the other side, the handbrake is definitely off and released, and we know that because the other side uh, was spinning absolutely freely. So all you literally wanna do is the same test. Uh, this is just a, a good starting indicator um, whether or not um, the brakes are actually seized on. So let's see what we can do. Okay, and as you can see, I've actually got to put quite a bit of force into that just to get it spinning. But even when I let go, that pretty much stops. So that is obviously uh, a very clear indicator that we have a problem. But at this point, we don't know if it's the caliper or perhaps whether or not there's something wrong with the sliders um, or perhaps there's something wrong with the pads. The pads may be seized in the carrier. Um, now, this isn't an accurate test, the next one, to be able to see whether or not it's the pads that are seized in the carrier or not, you can always grab the wheel and shake it side to side. Now, there won't be any movement. If there's movement, you've probably got another bigger problem. But the whole point of like trying to move the wheel side to side, that will actually move the disc and the disc will almost kind of slightly move the pads. And if the pads are seized in the carrier, we manage just to wiggle them apart and the wheel frees up. It's a good indicator that it's the pads that are a problem and not necessarily something else. So, let's give that a try. No. No, I don't think it's the pads. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the caliper. So, let's get the wheel off and have a closer look at the caliper itself. Okay, so I've now removed the road wheel from the near side rear and uh, yet yeah, straight away, I, the handbrake is still off. I should be able to turn that with my hand, but I'm actually putting quite a bit of force into that and that is not moving at all. Um, I'm gonna spin you around and show you uh, a, another telltale sign that the uh, brake's been binding on. Potentially for how long, who knows, but uh, let me just spin you around. So I don't know if you can see, let me just get the camera focused there. Um, I'm going to shine some light on it. Now, bearing in mind these are new discs, now it's going to be very difficult to tell. Um, I don't know if you can see these kind of faded marks, like one there and one round the outside. Let's just get you focused. Come on. There we go. 
So, oh, there, if I shine a bit of light onto it, you can probably see just a bit clearly. Now, basically, um, this is quite minor, I'll be honest. Although the brakes have been binding on, um, they've created these almost like blue patches. So you've probably heard the term bluing before. Basically, where the brakes have been stuck on or perhaps overused, they will overheat the disc and uh, cause it to discolor. Um, now because, now although I can't move that by hand, I could still move it with the wheel on. So although it's not completely tight, it's still tight to a point where it, where it would warm it up, but probably not overheat it. And I didn't get any um, uh, pulsing through the brake, brake pedals or um, vibrations through the car at all. So I think the customer is absolutely fine for the time being, just to replace um, a potential knackered caliper rather than putting on another set of pads and discs. Um, so if you ever have any uh, brake binding issues, look out or look even just look through the wheels for the colour of the disc. And if it has a bit of bluing, if you see it in like natural light or just with your own eyes, you'll see exactly what I mean. So my next point of view is to actually remove the caliper. Now, so to remove um, this caliper, you've got a retaining spring, um, which just pushes into the caliper there and then lips over um, the ears of the carrier top and bottom and then you've got a couple of bolts one at the top and one at the bottom there these will be seven mil hex bolts um, you're going to need a small ratchet to get in there um, and then the whole thing should just come off and then we're going to support it and have a closer look to see what we're dealing with so let's get on and do that now okay so just to let you know the best way to take these retaining um, clips out sometimes they'll just pull out but Get yourself a flathead screwdriver and literally just get behind it and just lever it out. There we are. Now careful, it will ping off. It is under tension. There we go. Easy as that. And then before we take off the rear pins or the rear bolts, there's just a couple of plastic covers. Forgive my head being in the way. And then I've got a, uh, a 3 8 uh, flexi ratchet head which has a seven mil hex socket on the back. Okay, when you're undoing the top one, the brake line does kind of get in your way, but it is a flexi brake hose, so you can just gently push that out of the way. There we go, right, that's out. Okay, and you just want to make sure that these, now I'm going to take this bottom one completely out. So this is your slider, okay? So this is uh, fixed to the carrier. This is what holds the caliper in place and it's designed, let's just get you focused in there again. Okay, there we are, so that's the slider. That's a really good close up of it. As you can see, there's quite a bit of dirt and debris and a bit of rubber on the end here as you can see so what we're going to do we're going to give these um, sliders a good clean up um, but that's if the new caliper that i have actually got doesn't come with these new ones um, just a wire wheel or a bit of um, you know high grit emery table something like that a bit of wet and dry to take that off and then we're going to grease it up as well okay so once the two pins are out then effectively we can just take the handbrake off but because we know it's binding on, it's gonna be a bit temperamental. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can just actually about push that off. Now you do wanna be careful. We definitely don't wanna break or damage the new pads at all. But the new pads are designed to sit straight in. So as long as we're pushing the caliper or just rocking it backwards towards the front of the car, it should eventually come off. And it is coming, it will just take a little bit of force. Now, if it really is sticky, you can get um, some sort of bar in there just to help pry it off. Um, as long as you're just careful um, that you don't damage anything in the process, um, because as long as we don't damage the, the carrier, the caliper will be going back for refurbishment, but we don't want to damage it too much. We don't want to damage anything. So just be careful, take your time, and just very slowly work it off. Yeah, when you've got the right tools, this works even better. And actually, before I do anything, I'm gonna go and get a support for the caliper. Okay, 
here she comes. There we go. So you can probably just see, I've just given the caliper a bit of support here, um, but it is connected by the hose. But what we don't want to do is put any kind of additional pressure on the hose, more importantly on the cable, which um, plugs into the back of the caliper, which also, be very careful, doubles up as the same wiring harness for the ABS sensor, which plugs into the back. Um, but we will get to a point where we'll disconnect both of those, we'll hang the caliper out of the way, because we're going to be taking it off completely anyway. Just be careful when you're taking it all apart, because if for any reason you're just doing standard maintenance and you want to push the piston back, um, except for the new uh, pads, then that's a whole different ball game. You just want to keep everything connected as much as you can. Okay, so now that we've got the suspected C's caliper off um, and the pads out, now the pads you probably could see came out really easily. It is 100% uh, not the pads that are seized in the carrier, so I am not worried about that at all. Uh, now that we've got the caliper off, look how easy we can spin that. Nice and free. So, if it's not a wheel bearing that's seized up or worn, if it wasn't the pads, that were seized in the carrier, process of elimination, we have a faulty caliper. And as you can just probably see as well, um, I've actually just manoeuvred uh, the caliper back up. It is well supported on top of the arm here and it's not going anywhere and there is no pressure on the brake hose or the actual cables uh, for the um, brake caliper electronic handbrake and the ABS sensor. We have eliminated everything else, so it must be the caliper which is seizing. Um, right, so, word of warning, here's all the technical stuff. If your vehicle does not have an electronic handbrake, then the caliper piston will be able to just wind back or push back just fine. There's nothing else you need to do. Um, but because we're dealing with electronic handbrake, you cannot wind back the piston or push the piston back until the actual electronic motor inside has been retracted. Now, you are only going to be able to do that using diagnostic equipment talking to the vehicle. So that is what we're going to do now. Now, the reason that why we're going to do this is that we need to confirm that the piston is definitely sticking or seized. Um, but I can't test that on this particular one until I've released the electronic handbrake or the internal motor or actuator um, using a diagnostic equipment talking to the vehicle ECU. So we're going to get back in the car and we're going to do that right now. Okay, so here we go. I am now back inside the vehicle. I've already hooked up my scan tool. Uh, I'm going to spin you around and uh, show you exactly what uh, I'm doing. Um, so this procedure is using diagnostic to release the internal actuator or motor inside the caliper for the electronic handbrake. So let me spin you around and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So this, uh, I've already logged on um, and I've already got the vehicle loaded up. Let's see if we can get you in there so in the main menu we want to go down to brake electronics uh, yeah we need to determine the right ECU okay so you actually want to go down to uh, functional tests and then go to special functions and then we want to go all the way down to the list oh it's actually near the bottom. This one is rear brake pad replacement procedure. Now, I know we're replacing the actual caliper, um, but, but, we, but again, we're just doing this procedure um, as if we were just wanting to push back the caliper because we want to make sure that it is 100% that it's the caliper which is seized. So we want to go to the rear brake pad replacement procedure. And this basically says... Um, You've got to keep the ignition on whilst you do this procedure and it's basically just going to release both rear calipers. So um, whether you decide or not to disconnect them when you're doing maintenance, as long as they're connected when you do this, it's going to release absolutely fine. So we're going to go to continue. So we're going to go to open calipers for pad replacement. And that's actually a lot quicker 
than I expected. But the good news with using the diagnostic tool, it actually gives you step-by-step -step instructions. So here it's saying the calipers are now open, continue with pad replacement. Um, but although the internal actuator is released, you will still need to push the pistons back, which is great because this is where we now test to see if the, the piston is seized or not. So let's get back down to the wheel and uh, have a little look. So all I've done is uh, just disconnected the electrical uh, cable from the back of the motor uh, and it's given me a chance just to mount it on top of the uh, upper control arm here. Um, now, I know what you're thinking guys, I should be supporting that, you are absolutely right. However, I'm doing it like this so I can give you guys um, a good view of really what's going on. Um, so what we want to do now is push the um, piston back. Um, here's a good bit of information for you. Um, if it's a regular caliper, normally these uh, you have to locate with a special tool, which is that one there. You have to locate it in some tabs and you actually have to turn the piston whilst it's being pushed in. With these electronic handbrakes, and I haven't been told or come across one otherwise, um, you, can, you don't need to twist these pistons, they will just push straight back in. Um, again, you want some sort of tool that will do that kind of job. And again, if you've seen the video with the Seat Leon um, rear brake pad replacement, same principle, same tool, we're just going to use um, a flat disc surface on the end um, between the piston and the caliper itself to see if this will push back. And like I said, I have my doubts, but we will very quickly find out. So I just want to nip that up. And you do want to get it straight. I want to make sure I get some even break, even pressure. Okay, so as you can probably tell, or just see, that is now wedged between the two. And as I twist the handle, it's gonna push the piston back in. So let's see what this does. Sorry if my hands are in the way, but with a seized caliper, you know it's probably gonna be tight. And you know what, straight away, I've got some free back. This should not be that difficult. I mean, it is going back, but it's very tight. Oh, I've just knocked the camera as well. Big old chunky feet. <sighs> yeah, do you know what? That is done for, although it is Oh, see, it's going back a tiny bit, but it should not be that tight. So yeah, we've confirmed everything that we thought. The caliper is pretty much seized, which is why the rear brakes are binding. Um, so that's all confirmed. We definitely know it's a caliper. So uh, let's take this one off. Um, the new one has just arrived um, and we'll get the new one on and show you the procedure. Okay, so we are going to now change out the caliper. So now uh, we need to completely disconnect uh, the caliper from the brake line because it's actually the only thing which is holding it all in place. Um, so the brake line is held in by, uh, I think it's a 12 or a 13 mil um, bolt, uh, which has a couple of washers either side. What I've done is I've actually remounted the brake caliper um, using the sliders back into place because it just um, holds everything in place whilst I disconnect. Uh, because we're going to be disconnecting the brake line, we need to clamp it off, otherwise brake fluid is just going to continuously run out, um, which is what we don't want. Um, so I've just got a very simple, very cost effective tool here. This is just a uh, brake hose clamp. Well, it's just a clamp, not necessarily a brake hose clamp, but it works perfectly. Um, so we're literally just going to loop that round the brake hose part of it. Don't try and clamp up um, a rigid brake pipe uh, because um, you're gonna crush it, you're gonna have all sorts of problems then you're gonna have to change it out. Um, I've seen it before, it's quite funny, but it happens. So remember, just clamp the nearest brake hose closest to the caliper. So we're just gonna put that round it, clamp it down. You don't have to go too mad, but that's absolutely fine. Um, so now we can disconnect the actual brake line. Uh, like I said, there will be a bit of um, residual fluid dripping out. So I've just put a pan down to catch it. Normally these bolts, okay, that's an 11 straight in. Normally these bolts are 14 mil on uh, most calipers, but this one's a little bit smaller. Now it shouldn't take too, yeah, there we go. Not too much effort at all. Literally just cracked it off and the rest you should be able to just unwind with your hand. Now, I probably recommend, and I'll show you why in a minute, take it out with your hand and let the actual brake hose, because there's a rigid part of it towards the end, come out with it. It might be a little bit stiff, but that's perfectly normal. Okay, there we go. 
And I'm just going to leave that to one side there. So now I'm going to take the sliders off, take the caliper completely out. Okay, there we are. One brake caliper completely removed. And I'll just give you a closer look as well. So that's the brake caliper itself. You've got the piston, but on the back, you have got your connector, which is a two pin connector. And it's just got a, a small little tab you need to press down on and remove. That's the piston, there will be the motor or the actuator for the actual piston itself. But there we are. We don't need to do anything else with that. We just need now to return it, purely because these products come with surcharges. Basically the supplier will take the old unit back, this unit, they will send it off to a specialist, they'll strip it apart, they'll fix what needs uh, fixing, um, and then they will refurbish it and resell it. So as long as you return it, you will get your surcharge back. And on this, the surcharge is quite a lot. So make sure you do return it. Otherwise you're gonna be paying for it. Okay, let's get the new one. Okay, so here is the old caliper that we've taken out. Now, uh, this is the new caliper. Um, if I just quickly take this out. Now, um, again, bit of advice. Whenever you've got the part, you wanna make sure you probably take it out, have a little look before you strip down too much. Fortunately, I did that prior to, and I know this caliper is correct. Um, so if we spin this over, there we go. And you just wanna compare it straight away. Straight away, that is absolutely fine. Same shape, same size, so everything will be absolutely fine. I am more than happy to fit that to the vehicle. Um, now, you can, I'll just let you know straight away, the new one does not come with these sliders, so you do have to swap these over. So remember, we're gonna give these a really good clean and grease them up before we pop them into the new, the new caliper. So we wanna take those out and just put them to one side. Now, in the kit, you will get a new uh, rubber dust cover for the bleed nipple, so you want to put that to one side. Very importantly though, now this um, you definitely need to know, inside this little kit you have two washers. Sorry if that's not focused. There we go. Two little washers. These are incredibly important. Um, so I haven't actually shown you on the car, but on the end of the brake hose these washers are designed to go either side of the hose and I will show you when we get round to fitting it. I just wanna give you a quick insight to what actually comes in the kit. So you'll always get uh, new washers for the brake hose where it connects. Uh, you'll get the new caliper, but you won't necessarily get new sliders. So you have to retain those and put them in the new ones. So let's get over to the vehicle and get this new caliper fitted. Okay, so just before we put the new caliper in, uh, what, what is also a good idea is uh, get ahead of yourself, go ahead and clean up those sliders. Now, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a, um, uh, a wire wheel uh, on a motor, on, well, bench wire wheel, and uh, I've just put the uh, sliders through and uh, everything came off absolutely fine and they are nice and clean. There is no residue on there whatsoever. Um, Pay close attention to what else is in the box. Lift up the, um, uh, the cardboard packaging because underneath may be uh, one of these. Now these are um, a special grease for uh, any sliders or moving parts um, for any brake components. Um, it's normally a graphite grease, uh, but you can use copper slip just in case it doesn't come with any. This box didn't actually have any in them. This is what I've got spare uh, in my toolbox. So uh, you just want to literally push out just a little bit of grease and you just want to lightly coat both sliders. There we are, just covering them with a bit of grease. Just like that, easy as that. Like I said, you don't have to go too mad at all. Um, we're now gonna go ahead and put them into the new caliper um, already, because when it comes to installing, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a close view of what I've done. So the new sliders um, I have now put in. So once you've greased them up, you just need to push them through. There will be quite a bit of resistance. This is perfectly normal. Um, it's only because um, it needs to push the rubber inside uh, slightly out so it goes through. Um, just kind of work the pin forwards and backwards to allow all that grease to coat the inside of that rubber guide um, nice and easy. Easy. Now it is still a little bit stiff, it's absolutely fine, but if there is no more resistance than that, and it's moving backwards and forwards, 
that will be absolutely fine and over time it will actually loosen up that little bit more. So there we go. Um, good bit of information, these calipers, the pistons will already be pushed back. The motor will already be set to the off position so they'll be retracted. So we literally now just need to put this back on the vehicle. I've already put the pads back in. Um, I've already actually put it over to make sure the piston is back in, which it is. So um, everything is absolutely fine. Just remember the orientation of which way the pads went in. And the reason I said that is because the inboard pad or the piston pad has a small retaining spring on top and that needs to go on the inside. But the outboard pad does not. So let's just get you focused there. But yeah, that doesn't have a spring, the other one does. So they do locate in specific positions. So once they're in, then just get your new caliper and put it on. Okay, so what I've just done is just tighten up the two sliders. Um, you just want to get them up to where they stop and then just nip them up, not very tight at all. Put the dust covers back on the back and then don't forget the retaining spring which locates in these holes and then sits behind these two parts of the carrier. These are a bit fiddly, sheer brute force, but ah, it's actually nice and easy that one. And because it's a new caliber, you can just push them in. That's absolutely fine. If you want to get a small little hammer and just hammer them in, then by all means do, just make sure you don't break anything. But other than that, that is now the caliper back on and secure. So now we just need to connect uh, the brake line. What I've also already gone and done is just reconnected the cable to the back of the new caliper. You just want to slide that on gently and you're listening for a little click to make sure that the uh, retaining tab has gone over the locator on the actual caliper. So there we are, all done. Let's get that brake hose connected. Okay, so this is the really important part. So this is the end of the brake hose that we need to connect. Now, if you remember me saying earlier, the kit comes with two new um, washers. Now, these washers are located at the end of this uh, brake hose and you've got, apologies for the light, it's pretty difficult to show you some decent light actually. So you have got one washer on the end here which sits between the caliper and this side of the brake hose and then you've got another washer between the bolt head and the opposite side of this brake hose. So when you're taking these things apart just please make note of where things are and that you can replace these washers accordingly. So I'm going to quickly take these out now, give everything a clean up and then install the new ones. There we go. So they are a bit fiddly sometimes. What I've just done there is just grabbed a pair of uh, pliers just to hold on to uh, the washer which was slightly pitched and I unscrewed um, the bolt. Um, so as you can probably see here, this washer is stuck to that side but that's fine because they will just pop straight off. Again, do be careful. But there we go. And that's come off just like that. So they're the two washers that we're going to replace. Okay, you can probably see we've got some slightly different shaped washers. This is more of a triangular shape, and this one is more circular. The circular one goes underneath the bolt head, and this triangular one is the one that goes between the brake hose and the caliper. So very important to orientate that. I must admit, not 100% sure why. If anyone knows, drop me a comment. I'd really appreciate that, but always follow what comes off. So this one's gonna go caliper side, this one is gonna go bolt side. Okay, so all I've gone and done is uh, just got some old rag and just cleaned up either side of the brake hose where the new washers uh, are gonna go through. It won't come with a new bolt, the new bolt is absolutely fine. Um, if there's any dirt or debris on there, a bit of wet and dry or emery paper, something like that, just to kind of take off um, any debris to give it a smooth contact surface. Um, I am gonna take back what I just said about the washers though. Turns out the new washers are both circular. Um, I must admit, I don't think there's gonna be a problem with either or. As long as it sits flush and it doesn't leak, we're all good. Probably actually notice as well, and I know this is a load of information, but this is very important information, especially when we're dealing with your brakes. So, these washers, you may not be able to see it, but on this side, one side is almost conical, so it's got a bit of a curve to it. 
and the other side is completely flat. Basically, we want flat sides either side of the actual hose itself. So this is where the conical side is gonna go onto the bolt. You're then gonna have the hose. Then you're gonna have the flat side, which is that side, go over the opposite side of the hose and then screw it all into the caliper. And the good thing with these as well, I don't know if you can quite see that, but basically the rigid pipe part of the hose actually locates specifically between two grooves and as long as it's between that you're absolutely fine so i've just done that up by hand so then you just want to get your 11 mil and just you this does come down to me i'm sure there are tightening torques for this it won't be too much at all you just want to tighten it up it will get to a point where it'll start biting and then you just want to nip it and that's literally it. you don't want to go too mad because if you strip the thread well so long caliber so now that we've done that all we need to do now is before we release the caliper um, back out using the diagnostics, we now need to bleed any air out of the system. So at this point, don't forget to take off the uh, clamp. Which will now allow brake fluid to travel down into the caliper. So let's bleed out the caliper. Okay, so now that we've fitted the new caliper, uh, we've connected the, uh, the brake hose and we've connected the multi-blood connector on the back of the motor. Um, now, we've, because we've taken the um, brake hose off, we've introduced air into the system, which is bad. Air compresses, brake fluid doesn't, which is what gives us our brakes. Um, so, I do know from experience that if this was a normal caliper, you would just go ahead, you would just do a normal procedure to bleed the air out. However, before we bleed the caliper, we actually have to now um, reset the electric motor. And again, we have to do that back up in the car using the diagnostics. Okay, here we are back in the vehicle again. So at this point, we are now gonna close the um, electric parking brake motors uh, so the pistons are at the correct position. Um, again, do this before you bleed it out um, because that's, that's the way I've always done it and it's been absolutely fine. So now we just need to set it. So we're gonna go back into the diagnostics. So let me spin you around. Um, at the same menu, we are still in brake electronics. We're gonna go down to functional tests again, special functions all the way down to rear brake pad replacement procedure. And then we're gonna to go to close calipers after pad replacement. And at this point, do not break the brake, the, uh, brake pedal or press the parking brake switch. The whole system will do everything on its own and give you step-by-step -step instructions. So let's close the calipers. Okay, there we go. So the calibers are now being closed and you probably heard that in the background as well. So we're gonna to go to continue, end of test. There we are, and there's been no issues. Um, so from here onwards, um, you would now bleed out the caliper. Um, we need to do that first before you even think about pressing the parking brake button. So don't press that. Sometimes the system on here, the instructions will say, now cycle the, uh, the parking brake or don't cycle the parking brake. And another bit of information as well, because uh, this system we've gone into has opened up the calipers, don't be shocked or surprised if you turn the ignition on to go back in and it starts giving you a load of parking brake faults. There will be faults that come up in the system. We will clear them later once everything has been done. So now that we've closed the calipers, let's get back down to the caliper and again under the hood as well and let's bleed out any air that we've introduced into the system. Okay, so when it comes to the process of bleeding out any air that's in the braking system, um, 
there's actually a really cool tool that I have which just makes my job so much easier. So I'm gonna spin you around and see what I've done. This is my uh, pressure bleeder. Uh, it's connected up to an airline. So inside here is fresh brake fluid um, and this is now under constant pressure nothing higher than two bar of pressure which is already what it's set to and um, when you open up the system this runs all the way up the line to the brake fluid reservoir now uh, these are quite standard caps these are the same size on most vehicles but it will not go on all vehicles sometimes the kit uh, will come with lots of different adapters and everything to make it fit a wide range of um, and then this is just the valve to let it through so once I let the, the um, fluid through the whole braking system will be under constant pressure so that when I open up the bleed nipple on the caliper which is the only side we need to do because the air will be located towards uh, the caliper only all the fresh brake fluid will come through this line through the system and then out through the brake caliper let's open up the bleed nipple and do that now Okay, so here we are down back at the new caliper. Um, now, the bleed nipple is located just here. It is an 11 mil um, bleed nipple. So I've actually got uh, an 11 mil uh, ratchet spanner. Um, these are a bit fiddly to get into. Um, why they designed them like this, I don't know, but hopefully the newer models would have thought about that. Um, so the best way to get to this is just over the back there. So I'll loop that over and you can actually maneuver the spanner behind the slider here it gives you the most room and then you just want um, a small bottled container with a pipe on the end of it to catch all the air and the fluid which then comes through now when I open this you'll hopefully see the fluid start to come through as I'm pretty sure you will actually so I'm gonna get you zoomed in there hopefully you'll be able to see that so let's see so the system's under pressure, I should be having constant pressure through this line and any air in the system will come out almost straight away followed by nice clear fluid coming through the line. Again, apologies, it might be difficult to see, but you may just see, there we go. So you can hear the air already. And you just wanna keep opening that, there we go. Sorry, my hands are so there's a lot of air coming through there. And you know what, it won't even be that much as well. You'll get quite a bit of air, come out, few bubbles, and then you'll get already nice golden fluid going through, catching in the bottle. So you wanna leave this for about maybe 30 seconds, because once you see a continuous flow of fluid, that is your job done. It's probably there already actually, if I'm honest, but we're just gonna give it a little bit of time, bleed out any air in the system, and we'll be golden. And you know what, I think that is absolutely fine now. So we'll just get back to doing that up. And again, these bleed nipples are not that tight. You just wanna nip them up. Nothing too sinister whatsoever. There we go, and that's absolutely fine. And then pinch the line whilst you're taking it off so you don't get any fluid drip. Let the rest of that drain into the bottle. And that allows for very minimal spillage and there we are, that's all done. And because the system is still under pressure, it does give you a good opportunity to have, around, uh, have a look around um, uh, the new brake hose seals or uh, washers, just to make sure that they're not leaking. But that looks absolutely fine. So there we go. And then the last thing to do is just to put the new nipple dust cover straight on the top. Okay guys, almost there. We are now back in the vehicle. So now that we have bled all the air out of the new caliper, um, we are ready to now cycle the electronic handbrake. Um, I've come out of the system, the diagnostic is now off. Um, when you do first put on the parking brake, 
in this procedure, it may sound like it's taking a little bit longer to go on than normal. That is absolutely fine. It's just adjusting itself, finding its stopping point, its retracting point. It's absolutely fine. So let it do what it's got to do. Um, so in this respect, we are just going to turn the ignition on. Now you may hear some beeps and things. It's got an oil change light and a TPMS light on. Uh, we'll be addressing those later. Um, so you just want to go down to your electronic parking brake, pull it up and allow it to cycle. Now that sounds absolutely fine. Put your foot on the brake, release it, sounds absolutely fine. So we're cycling um, the parking brake just to get it into position and at the moment it sounds absolutely fine. You may feel that your brake pedal might be a little bit spongy. That is perfectly normal for the time being. Um, when you've introduced air into the system and bled it out, it will take time to settle. However, most importantly, because the caliper has been seizing, it's been uh, binding on. Now that in turn, is gonna make your brake pedal feel a little bit more stiff and more responsive. Because it's been slightly binding, it's already braking, so that when you brake a bit more, it's gonna seem like your brake pedal is really, really responsive. But we've now repaired the fault, so you've now got a nice, normally working or normally operating caliper. So your brake pedal will probably feel a little bit different to what you're used to, because this could have been going on for a while before you've actually found the reason and addressed the situation. So if you now drive away and you feel like the brake pedal is a little bit more loose than normal, that is absolutely fine. Um, good practice, you would normally bleed out the entire brake system just in case, um, but I do know that the clamp was clamped off very close to the caliper and air would not have traveled back into the system. However, good practice, bleed out the entire system. Um, so from here onwards, let's see if the rear wheel is now still binding. I have already put the wheel back on, so it should be nice and easy to spin up and compared to uh, what we were trying to do earlier, we'll see what happens. So, now that we're in the car, let's put the parking brake on. There we are, that's on. Let's go see what the wheel's doing. So, this is the driver's rear, so the offside rear. This is the one we didn't have a problem with. The parking brake has now been applied. And that is not moving at all, which is what we want to see. So, we are now round to the near side rear, which is the side that we've replaced the caliper on. Parking brake applied. And that is really good to see, that is not moving at all. So we know that the parking brake is working in the on position. Back in the car again, ignition on. We are going to put a foot on the pedal. And release. Offside wheel, which has always been fine, is rotating very nicely. So that's nice and free. Moment of truth. There we are. That is absolutely perfect. That is free as anything. It doesn't require any effort to turn that. So that is absolutely brilliant. And that is job done. Okay, and there we have it guys, we are all done. Now from here onwards, don't forget that uh, once you've disconnected um, the pressure bleeder, if you have one from the brake fluid reservoir, just double check where your um, brake fluid level is. If it's not a maximum, just top it up. Um, as long as it's above minimum, you're absolutely fine. Um, from here onwards, I recommend to drive the car, just get the system working, the caliper working, to bring it back in, take the wheel off and just double check that the new washers you've uh, replaced on the actual brake hose isn't leaking at all. So there there we are. Thank you so much for watching guys, this has been a great video to record. Um, if you've enjoyed it um, or learned a little something, you know the drill by now, hit the like button. More importantly, please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. Um, I'm going to try my absolute best to record loads more interesting videos um, to get you down to the nitty gritty and more importantly, to save you guys money. Um, so thanks again for watching, I am Adam from Green Auto Services and we'll see you guys in the next video.